Does your business need intellectual property? On this episode of Invent Anything, we ask the question, does your business need patents? We'll explore why you should or shouldn't have patents. I'm John Cronin. Welcome to Invent Anything. Inventions keep the world spinning. From fire in the wheel to today's high tech, inventions power change. Turn your inventions into reality. Learn how to get your ideas to market. This is Invent Anything with John Cronin. In this epi- episode, we'll cover a number of things. First of all, we'll give a little bit of background, but we'll cover six topics. The first topic is business brand, personal brand. The second topic is business risk reduction. The third topic is business enhanced monetization, really how patents can affect that. And then the, t- the fourth topic is business valuation using intellectual property. And then the fifth topic will be business cost reductions using intellectual property. Who would have thought you could do that? And then topic number six is to talk about how IP can broadly enhance business and strategy. You hear the word IP, which means intellectual property and patents. There's more to intellectual property than just patents, and we'll talk about that. The audience, I always talk about who this uh, recording could be for, what, what audience. This is a very big audience, we believe. Really, it's for those that are in business, for those owners or CEOs that own the business. And and for most of them that actually don't believe intellectual property has anything to do with their business. This is what this podcast is about. We also think that the audience might be for those in business that don't have any documented IP at all and wanted to see, you know, some maybe new spectrum of possibilities for growth for their company through this. This is for you. A third audience could be for those business owners who want to increase their revenue. Intellectual property helps you do that. So we want to talk about that. If you want to increase your market share. Fourth, for those that maybe want to have a business and make it more secure, maybe they're feeling or you're feeling that your business is not as secure as you'd like it to be. So intellectual property could be for you and we'll talk about that. And finally, as another level audience, if you haven't heard about patents in business and how they work together, this could, je- this could definitely change your business forever. And I can tell you, I've worked with companies where it has. So again, this is John Crump from Invent Anything. And coming up, surprisingly, there are many myths about patents held by about 90% of companies. Which, And we'll explore that and we'll learn how patents can help you, you brand your company in many better ways and surprisingly reduce costs. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. Well, let's jump into it. But before we do, I'd like to give a little bit of background. First of all, myself and my business, we've had decades of experiences servicing thousands of companies, big and small, low tech and high tech. So when I talk about how intellectual property patents can impact your business, I have experience doing that over 25 years. Another part is that intellectual property, when I talk about it, it's related to inventions. It's things like patents and trade secrets or enable publications. It's not things like uh, trade names and copyrights and things like that. One of the parts of background I think is fascinating is a myth. One of the myths that we hear a lot is we really don't have anything that could be a patent. Well, I can guarantee you (laughs) that in most cases you do. Uh, I hear that so much and we debunk that myth over the phone usually in five minutes. The second myth, and I don't know where this starts, but a lot of folks think that patents are very expensive. Um, They're not, um, and they never think about the return on those patents and they never think about the, the return and the lowering cost that comes from that. So that's another myth. And we have done many podcasts on many aspects of the business and IP and they're all there for you to listen to for free. For instance, podcasts on what is a patent, or what is a trade secret, or what is an enabled publication. And the last piece of background is kind of an interesting fact finding. If we assume that there's 300,000 patents a year awarded to USA companies, uh, what that means, because there's 25 million USA companies, what that means is about 1% of businesses Get a, get a patent or less, because in that 300,000, you know, some companies have achieved many patents. So it's really interesting that intellectual property and patents are not usually the lifeblood 
of most businesses. And I don't care whether you're working in real estate, uh, working in a bakery, uh, running uh, a, a taxi service. There's potentially intellectual property in all of these. So let's get into it. Topic number one, business brand and personal brand. First of all, one of the neat things about provisional applications, which are very low cost, uh, is that as soon as you file a provisional application, you can put patent pending on your website and on the products. That's really powerful. Another thing is that once a patent is in the business, in your business name or in your name, that's kind of like a badge of honor. I mean, we've seen this transforming, you know, businesses when they can say what they're doing is patent protected. And, you know, once you get a patent filed and, and issued, you're in a different club. You, you become an inventor. You can absolutely say that I'm an inventor. It's a great badge of honor to get a patent. And given the hurdle to get it, which is inexpensive, and given the fact that most companies could do this, it's amazing to me that a lot of companies haven't done this. One of the things that I've found in many businesses is uh, that the once you get a patent, the patent office is the organization that grants you the patent. So they're independent of your business. They're a third party. They're looking at inventions every single day. So when you have an issued patent, not only do you know you're an inventor, but this third party called the patent office tells you you're an inventor. And that's certainly a big, a big deal that you can use in all sorts of ways in your business in marketing and sales, for instance. One of the cool things is that when you become an inventor or your business has a patent to it, you can get a plaque and put it on the entry of your, your, your waiting room of your business or put it on your website. It does amazing things. I've sat in waiting rooms waiting to get into clients' offices where they actually do have a patent or two on their wall. And I've watched people come in and literally look at those patents and read them and start, you know, you, you see them thinking that this must be an inventive company. One of the things which is really good about patents from a personal brand issue and from a business brand issue is it's infectious. It gives you boasting rights to your team. And then all of a sudden, everybody wants to participate in the next one. So my maxim here is anyone that we meet that has a business with a little bit of work, I would bet you they could get a patent. I've, I've yet to see it. So if you don't think you have a patent, uh, I would say that maybe do some work and find someone to help, you know, because you certainly have a possibility of getting a patent. And one of the things we found about having patents, even your first one, is you can mar market the living daylights out of it. Uh, and, and we've seen that occur as well. One of the things is also when you get your first patent filed or even issued, what a thing it does, it can impress the entire business. It, it can impress executives, your boards, or even investors. What a wonderful thing to report on. I've been on a number of boards, been CEOs of multiple companies, and it's always great to you know, talk to the board about some new patents that were filed or issued. And you know, another thing about a first patent is that it changes the game in winning customers. If you understand patents, that a patent is something that gives you the right to stop others from make, using, or selling your invention. So when a customer is trying to choose your product or service over somebody else's, if they know you have a patent on it, then it'll be a difficult decision for them not to go with you. Because by doing going with somebody else, they might be in violation or contributing to infringement of your patent. Let's go to topic number two, a slightly different topic called business risk reduction. What is risk in business? Well, you and I both know if you're in a business that you do all sorts of things to protect your business. You get DNO insurance, you get uh, fire insurance, health insurance for your employees. There's all sorts of insurances you get. One of the things about documenting your IP, whether it's patents, trade secrets, or enabled publications. It's one of the smartest things you can do as a business to protect your innovativeness, your inventiveness. You see, there is no other type of insurance you could ever write that would cover someone copying your inventions. It, and it shows your business is innovative. One thing that you can certainly do by documenting your IP, it's great insurance against copycats. Because if you get patents on the things that you're doing, someone copies you, you now have the ability to assert patents. So what a great risk reduction, right? One of the things which is kind of cool is when documenting your intellectual property, whether patents or trade secrets, it's great because you're having your employees be the inventors and they're signing that they, they understand that you own the rights to that. And we've seen rogue employees that go off and they think that they own these inventions. And if you get your inventions filed with their name on it, they assign the rights to you. So what a wonderful way to reduce the risk of rogue employees. Another thing is when you document IP and it's related IP processes like trade secrets, this can actually assist against hacking. Hacking. Well, well, if you have a good trade secret program, that trade secret program starts to find those really important things and, and puts them on a different track to be hidden. 
So we found that new trade secret programs and companies can actually be a great risk reduction against hacking. One of the things is that if we want to look at businesses that want to find a new way to improve or enhance their long-term ownership of their business, patents certainly become a way to do this. It's simply another arrow in the business owner's quiver to show ownership, particularly if the patents might be outside the company where the, a holding company might own them, and you can license from the holding company back into the company that you own. So now there's a clear definition that you own the company even outside of your own company. So it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful strategy. One of the things that we have found from a risk reduction is that you talk to vendors, suppliers, customers, et cetera. And then the next thing you know, all of a sudden they're doing your ideas. So one of the greatest things you could do for risk reduction is before you have those really sensitive conversations with vendors and suppliers and partners and customers, you could consider filing a patent on what you're gonna to talk to them about. That's a tremendous risk reduction of giving away your secrets. If you have NDAs, and who doesn't? <laughs> Lots of us have non-disclosure agreements. Patents are, and trade secrets give you a great way to put more teeth into the non-disclosure agreement because it's a showing of what you own even beyond the non-disclosure agreement. We can have a whole series of podcasts on this and we will at some point. And one of the things is you can assure yourself that you can get a valuation of patents, but you can take a look at the value, which we'll talk about. And it's a sort of 14 patent rule that we found that in some business areas, that when you get above 14 patents, the value of your company can go sky high from one or two X revenue to 14, 15, 20 X, 100 X revenue in terms of returns uh, for your, your business being sold. One of the things is that another way to risk, re risk, reduc re risk reduct your, your business is through a hedge with investors. You see, when you own patents, uh, your, your investors will know that you're innovative, uh, as we mentioned. And they will show that you own those innovators. A lot of investors are looking for deals where they're unique. Patents shout out that you're unique. And finally, the last thing I'll talk about for business risk reduction is sort of the David and Goliath uh, scenario. You know, if you have a small business and you're dealing with larger companies, one of the things that allows you to sit across the table and to be just as big as them is that you have some patents in an area that they don't. You see, they can't get those patents because you own them. And the patent office gives you that right. So in a David Goliath situation, you can literally get, uh, level the playing field by having patents that the large companies don't, and you can use that to your advantage in all sorts of business interactions. Coming up, you can learn how to use IP to raise your entire business valuation as much as 5X or more, and understand how business valuation using IP can impact so many things about your business, like enhancing the M&A value, or even solving things like founders issues a wide spectrum of things that can be used. So coming up, and we'll talk about that. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. Let's go on to topic number three, business enhanced monetization. Patents can be monetized in many ways. Uh, for instance, you can do all sorts of things to license these exclusively, non-exclusively, do it in a particular field of use, uh, do it through some contract terms to carve out what you want to own or what you want to license. So it's a wonderful mechanism having a patent and be able to monetize it. The caveat here is to make sure that you have good patents. Um, and we can talk about that in another podcast and we have some on those. But it's a, it's a great monetization tool. One of the things is you probably wear, if you have patents, you could sell them. Another thing is that if you have patents, you can enhance your company's valuation. We talked a little bit earlier about this 14 patent rule, because we've done studies where you look at the value of uh, uh, M&A on the y-axis and the number of patents in the x-axis, and you look at deals that you see maybe on the internet, and this company sold for 30 million and it has two patents, and this company sold for 25 million and has one patent, and this company sold for 150 million and had 11 patents or 12 patents, whatever. If you put all those dots down in the graph, you usually find around 13 or 14 patents, the value of the company goes up. Uh, so we're not saying the patents is, you know, the only reason why this goes up because we don't have direct evidence, but certainly subjectively, patents can really help raise the value of companies. And we've seen that firsthand. So patents in your business, raising your valuation, how else could you raise your valuation from one or two X revenue in an M&A to 10 or 15 or 20 X? We don't know any other way that can be done. One of the things is patents can be used uh, in getting a loan. 
that can be an asset that they can borrow against. Patents can be certainly used to help raise money. We talked about the impressing the investor, but a good patent portfolio, at least one or two, will help you sell the case of what you're doing is innovative to your investors. Again, the, third, the patent office is a great third party, independent you know, voice that you are innovative. Another thing is if you have patents, uh, you can get better terms with your customers. Uh, once again, we mentioned that you, if you have patents on, on your product or service and you tell your customers about that through your marketing, they're less likely to go with the competitor uh, because they don't want to get sued for infringement or induced infringement. Patents also can be used with suppliers. This is a little known thing that you and I both know that if you have suppliers, you're telling them your needs and you're educating about not only what they do to help you, but more specifically what they need to change to help you better. Why not patent that? because that will allow you to own that improvement. And therefore you can reduce the terms of what the supplier is gonna sell uh, this supply to you because you own the actual property. In essence, you're providing them the ability to not litigate against them or sue them, really give them a license for better terms. One of the key studies that have been done time and time again is that patents can be used to increase gross margins. In some studies, it would be suggested that if you had a bunch of products and services, you had patents on some and not on others, the product or services that have patents that are patent protected usually have about a 34 to 35% increased gross margin. So why not use that as a way to increase uh, the value in your company? And then finally, patents are a great way to get access. You see, because when you have patents, uh, you can do all sorts of deals because you have an ownership position on paper of what you own. It gives a great way to discuss with any kind of partnership arrangement, giving you some strength in, in, in the overall discussion. Speaking about valuation, why don't we jump to topic number four, business valuation using IP. We'll get a little bit specific here, but we have a whole podcast on this whole idea of valuing intellectual property. So the first thing is, if you have patents or trade, the, trade secrets or other invention intellectual properties, they can be valued just like real estate can, uh, just like business equipment can. There's a method to do this. In order to do it correctly, though, you need some expertise. But one of the cool things is that you can actually pretend that you have a patent, not even get one yet. Pretend you have a patent. Let's write down kind of what we think the claim of that patent could be. And we can then value the patent based upon that claim. Now what you're doing is you're kind of valuing the patent before you even write it up, which is kind of neat. Uh, not only that, but if it's a good valuation, it, it, it just rings clearly why you'd want to file that patent. Uh, so pretending you have a patent and doing evaluation is a wonderful low cost way of figuring out if your intellectual property is really valuable. One of the things about IP valuation, this is kind of like an unknown secret, is that valuations can be, be valued beyond the market you're in. You see, claims actually represents the patents, just like the, the, the meets and bounds of a real estate title defines the, the geography that you own in, in, in the real estate, the real property. Intellectual property uses claims. These claims can be generically written so that you have maybe a pencil with uh, you know, a special gum eraser, and that's what you're selling. But if you have a pencil you know, with an eraser, that's more broad than a gum eraser. So you now have a bigger market. So what happens here is that patents can be written in broad ways. So you could literally have a patent that could be worth a billion dollars, but the market that you're in is 10 million. So think about that. And if you had a patent worth a billion dollars and your business was worth 10, you might really think about trying to monetizing that patent. One of the things that we found is that you can develop an IP story that can really demonstrate this intrinsic and intangible value of the intellectual property to your company. We, we have found that small public market, small companies in public markets, uh, basically they can price in the value uh, with their retail stockholders, where the stock actually goes up by telling an IP story. One of the things we did talk about is patents can be valued in other fields of uses outside your core business. So therefore it can have a lot of licensing value. Patents can straighten out founders issues. Think about it. Two or three people want to start a company. Before you start that company, get a apply for a patent, then it's really clear that you're the founder of the invention. Because if you do it after, it's unclear and everybody's going to take credit for it. We've seen this so many times in early stage companies. One of the neat things about patents is you can create patents in a value chain perspective, taking your invention and enhancing it to the customer side, how they're going to use it, or your supplier side, how they're going to make stuff to go into your product. And if we have value chain portfolio, which leverages the discussions that you'll have with your partners, suppliers, and your customers. And then finally, patents are really great in an M&A situation. See, at the end of the day, whatever you're valued at, 
the value of the transaction versus the business value of the company. That difference usually is called goodwill. And literally about 50% of the goodwill value could be an intangible assets. And a good part of those intangible assets could be patents. So by having patents, you can justify the delta of goodwill. So we really recommend that you can improve the value of your business by valuing the intellectual property and then taking some action. Coming up next, you'll learn what, what paper patents are about and how they can be used to significantly reduce cost in your current business. And also you can learn a number of examples on how IP can enhance the many areas of your business strategy. So IP can infect your business strategy. So stay tuned. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. Now we're going to go to topic number five, business cost reductions using your intellectual property and patents. Okay, I know we said this is myth, right? That people think the patents are expensive. But when you hear this topic, you recognize they can do a lot to save you money. And I don't think anybody really talks about that. So how can patents and intellectual property be used to save you money? The first thing is that you can get patents before you do the R&D the, or the prototype. And we call that a paper patent. You kind of go through the process of laying it out, laying, laying out your product on paper and thinking about how to enable it, thinking about what you can claim. And a, a good first provisional filing of 15 to 20 pa pages is a great reference to get started on hiring somebody or, or, or working with somebody to get your prototype up and running. So by thinking through the patent, and the provisional, uh, before you actually do the R&D, you're gonna find all sorts of mistakes that you would have made in R&D, but now you can find them in paper. So believe it or not, the patents and the patent process can help you save money in R&D. 95% of the patents in the patent office are paper patents. So think about that. Why are there so many patents that no products are actually developed on? It's because a lot of companies use the, the patents as a way of kind of thinking through that future product or service. Another thing is that the process of getting, say, your first patent, whether it's a paper patent or a patent on something that you sell, it's a very logical process that you can use to replace a lot of trial and error that you might use in development. And we've seen this time and time again, working with clients, then they're actually going through the process of getting their patent defined. They see all sorts of errors that they would have made in doing prototyping. One of the things is developing patents forces you to enable your idea. So if you can enable it, that means that you know on paper it will work. And we actually have a podcast on enablement. Many times getting a number of paper patents in place can protect the various product directions. So if you choose the wrong path, you have another path, but you've defined that as a provisional. So you can be late to the physical product, but at least cover it so you can kind of catch up. One of the things we've seen is that a patent really, if it's laid out right, is a mini business plan as it forces you in the patent to discuss the business need, the market, the product, and the technology that you're thinking about, and then your innovativeness. So a mini business plan, as an example to a patent, is a wonderful way of doing a virtualization of your business and saving money on errors. One of the things that we certainly find is reducing the cost of sales. A lot of people want to hire more people for sales, but what if your salespeople got more productive, more efficient? Patents in marketing and sales certainly helps the sales. And you can, you can find that time and time again. So it's a wonderful way to reduce costs. Add a patent or two to the, sales, to the salesman's you know, briefcase, and they'll have more to sell, more easily to sell. You talk about reducing R&D costs, and you can easily do that uh, through intellectual property by virtualizing your R&D process through the paper patent process. You talked about liability. You know, maybe you have business insurance, uh, DNO insurance, whatever it is. Well, you know, when you have patents, you've run, gone through a process of looking at the prior art. So when you look at the prior art for your product or service, you'll actually see what patents are out there. So in essence, when you're developing the patent, you're doing a free to operate study to some level. And that would certainly reduce your risk of getting sued by somebody else, or even worse. You develop a product or service, and then some larger company comes by and sues you and tells you to cease and desist. So free and operate, which we have a podcast on that you can take a look at, is a wonderful way of uh, reducing costs. Because think about the cost of losing your business. And then finally, one of the cool things about intellectual property is you can reduce disputes, reduce litigations. 
and all these other related costs. Because when you own the patent on what you're selling, if you have detailed what you're doing to a partner or a customer, and then they start to do what you're, it's inside of your patent, you have a very easy case to say, no, this was my invention. And so you can reduce all the costs that are related to disputes. So patents is a great way across the board of reducing costs. Let's move to the last topic, topic number six, IP broadly enhancing business strategy. Okay, I get it. I know if you're watching this podcast, you're really good at your business and you probably have lots of things that you do in your business and, and you're doing all sorts of strategies to improve all sorts of aspects of your business, your efficiency, your market, your sales, your profit margins. So I get it. But let's think about intellectual property for a minute. This could be a brand new tool to your business strategy toolbox and you'll uncover uh, many uses for patents in, in your business strategy. I mean, we'll give you some examples. But when we talk about IP, we're talking about patents, trade secrets, and enabled publications. Again, there are podcasts on what those are. And each of those separately have value, but when you combine them in an overall strategy, it has even more uh, uh, business value. And we talked about having business value to brand or monetization or to lowering risks or reducing costs, just to name a few. Here are eight specific examples that we'll wind down with to give you some real concrete examples of how intellectual property can affect your business strategy. Example number one, winning more business, using patent and marketing. What, what, what is better than that, right? Using intellectual property to leverage your sales. Example number two, getting a great deal from suppliers. Patent the improvements that they're making before they do it. And if we'll be able to leverage more of that discussion with the suppliers. Raising money, absolutely a key essential, can absolutely help trans be transformative, not only in raising the money and someone is saying yes, but in what the evaluation could be. Another example, example four, is improving branding. Patents can make you a great innovator or can show that you're the owner of this invention. And we talked about the personal brand issue as well. Example number five, raising business valuation for an M&A. That is by developing good patents and trade secrets and enable publications and a good IP story. Look, if I was to say to you that you're gonna sell your company and you're hoping to get an improved valuation and you knew that there was a possibility of getting five or 10X or even 100X of the valuation, than the two X you're looking for, why would you not take a look at this? Right now, we're working with a company that's developing a program that doesn't have very many patents at all, but they try to sell their company and they didn't get the value that they wanted to. So they came to us because they recognized if they had a more solid intellectual property story that the acquirers would have bought them and given them a much higher valuation. One of the things, as we mentioned, example number six is protecting your R&D costs, patent improvements, and therefore you're, you're covering your R&D cost because you're covering those improvements. Here's a good one. Example number seven, very different. Em employee morale. You see, uh, people don't know how much you know until they know how much you care, right? Same with employees. If you care about them, you care about their ideas. If you care about their ideas, then maybe helping them get some patents on their ideas can help you with morale. I don't care whether you have three employees or 100 employees. When you start a patent program, you have started something that's very infectious. That says you as the owner, basically believe in your employees' ideas. And the last example, and there's so many examples, I wish we had more time, is uh, copycats. Time and time again, you start a business, you're fresh out of the market, you're moving the market up, it looks like you're winning, and then all of a sudden you get a competitor, a big one, that's gonna pull more money into the market and win because of their brand before you even have a chance to get there. Sound familiar? Patents is one way that you can stop that and level the playing field. And we mentioned the David and Goliath effect. So let's wrap up. The first thing is we talked about the background. We discussed all sorts of things like patents and trade secrets and enabled publications and how we had a background to, and we still do to leverage thousands of companies. We discussed the myths about patents. So many companies, for instance, think that patents are expensive. They're not. And so few companies even have patents. So we tried to debunk some of those myths and give you some background. In topic number one, we talked about business brand and personal brand. We discussed things like the low cost approach to a first provisional and what that can do for you. Like that you can have patent pending, like it's a badge of honor, like it makes you the inventor. And the, it's the patent office that says you're the inventor. And that's an independent third party. And quite honestly, it gives you both team rights and marketing rights and leverage across the business. So my maxim is that most businesses that when we look at them who don't believe they can get patents actually do. So business brand and personal brand, you know, are something to really consider. In topic number two, we talked about business risk reduction. 
We discuss risk reduction from things like copycats, rogue employees, creating holding companies for leverage. We discuss, discuss putting more teeth into your NDA using patents, how investors can get influence. Finally, we discuss the David and Goliath approach where you can sit across the table against a giant and have effectively the same power or position when it comes to the ownership of the intellectual property. And that would allow you to level the playing field. A lot of ways, just a few that we mentioned for a business to risk reduce itself. In topic number three, we talked about business enhanced monetization. We, we discussed that patents can be monetized in many ways from licensing, selling, using it to back a loan, enhanced valuation of 10X or more, and getting better terms with suppliers, vendors, and customers. In essence, good IP can get you access to any kind of monetization opportunity. So really business valuation can be, business monetization can be enhanced. In topic number four, we covered business valuation using IP. We discussed that you can actually pretend you have a patent and check out what the value is. We discussed that you can have a business in one market, uh, but patent claims that stretch across many markets so that you can have a larger value. IP can do all sorts of things. If you're a small public company, you could probably raise the value of your stock for retail investors who think and, and believe that patents are a badge showing your inventiveness. You can use it to enhance your goodwill uh, in an M&A. We also discussed value chain portfolios. Oh, that gives you the ability to broaden your offering for suppliers and customers. We talked about in topic number five, business cost reduction using intellectual property. We discussed how IP from a cost perspective can be used uh, to dramatically lower costs in a, in, in a business. We talked about the basic patent process that lends itself to virtualizing the R&D using paper patents as a way to explore, you know, is the invention, is the prototype gonna work even before you build a prototype? We discussed using it as a great way as a mini business plan sizing. We also discussed how patents can be used uh, to, to help you determine new directions that you wanna go in. See, reducing costs by understanding your freedom to operate is another thing that comes out of business cost reductions using IP. We discussed really important ways to reduce costs through this paper patent process to sort of protect the various directions. So you're headed in one direction, but you have patents in a number of the directions. And if the one direction you're headed in doesn't work for some reason, you can switch to another direction because you won't lose the time uh, you might you might take a little bit longer to get the product out, but at least you own it. So many times it gives you a great fallback position. In topic number six, we discuss how intellectual property broadly enhances business strategy. We talked about it being a great new tool in your business strategy toolbox. We gave eight good examples of how it helps from winning more business, raising money, improving branding, raising your valuation, enhancing M&A positions, and, and all that. But even things like helping employee morales, was solving those kind of naughty founders issues. So certainly a lot of different ways that intellectual property can broadly enhance your business strategy. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and give us a like. Come join our blog, Invent Anything, and listen to our new series for Inventors at Work. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.